Today, I'm going to explain Handshake Protocol. The most complex part in security circuit layer is the Handshake Protocol. This protocol allows the server and client to authenticate each other and also to negotiate an encryption and message authentication code algorithm and cryptographic keys to be used to protect data sent in an secure socket layer record. This handshake protocol is used before any application data is transmitted. The handshake protocol consists of a series of messages exchanged between the client and server. All of these are the format shown in the next slide. Each message has three fields, that is type 1 byte, this will be indicates one of the 10 messages. This all the 10 messages will be listed in the table. Let's say the length is a 3 bytes, the length of the message in bytes. Content should, should be greater than the 0 bytes. The parameter associated with this message, these are the listed in the table. These are the table it shows the secure socket layer and shake protocol message types. And uh, this is the diagram and shake protocol action. In this there will be four phases that is phase one, phase two, phase three and phase four. I am going to explain one by one. Phase 1 is nothing but establish the security capabilities. This phase used to initiate a logical connection and also establish the security capabilities that will be associated with it. The exchange is initiated by the client which will send a client allow message with the following parameters. The first parameter is called as a version. This is the highest secured socket layer version. This will be understood by the client. Second parameter is called as a random. This is the client generated random structure consisting of a 32 bit time step and 28 bytes generated by a secure random generator. These values serve as nonsense and are used during key exchange to prevent replay attacks. Next one is called a parameter we can call as a session ID. This is the variable length session identifier. A non-zero value indicates that the client wishes to update the parameters of an existing connection or to create a new connections on this session. A zero value indicates that client wishes to establish new connections on a new session. Next parameter is called as a cyber shoot. And this is a list that contains the combinations of the cryptographic algorithm supported by the client and decreasing order of preferences. Each element of the list defines both the key exchange algorithm and cyber spec. These are discussed in separately. Next one it is called as a compression method. This is a list of compression methods that a client supports. After sending the client allow message, the client will be waits for the server allow message that contains the same parameters as the client allow message. For the server allow message, the some conversions will apply. The version field contains the lower of the version suggested by the client and the highest supported by the server. The random field is generated by the server and is independent of the client's random field. If the session ID field of the client is non-zero, the same value is used by the server. Otherwise, the server session ID field contains the value for a new session. The cyber shoot field contains the single cyber shoot selected to the server from those proposed by the client. 
the compression field will be contains the compression method selected by the server from those proposed by the client. The first element of the cyber shoot parameter is the key exchange method. So some of the key methods, uh, exchange methods are supported. The first one is called as a RSA. Yeah, this is a secret key encrypted with the receiver's RSA public key. Next is a fixed Diffie element. This is a Diffie element key exchange in which the server certificate contains the Diffie element public parameters that is signed by the certification authority. The public key certificate contains the Diffie element public key parameters. The client will be provided with the Diffie element public key parameters either in a certificate if client authentication is required or in a key exchange message. Next one it is called mParamel Diffie element. This technique will be used to create a mParamel secret keys. In this Diffie element public keys are exchanged signed using the senders provide RSA or DSS key. Then the receiver can use the corresponding public key to verify the signature. Certificates are used to authenticate the public keys. This would appear to be the most secure of the three Diffie Hellman options. Anonymous Diffie Hellman. The base Diffie Hellman algorithm is used with a no authentication that is each side sends its public Diffie Hellman parameters to the other with no authentication. This approach is vulnerable to man in the middle attacks in which the attacker conducts anonymous Diffie Hellman with, with both forties. Next is called as a Fortiger. The technique defined for the Fortiger scheme which includes the some of the fields like a cipher algorithm and the MAC algorithm, cipher type and is exportable, hash size, key material and then fourth size. Next phase in handshake protocol action is the second phase that is server authentication and the key exchange. Here the server begins in this phase by sending its certificate and also it needs to be authenticated. The message will be contains one or a chain of X.509 certificates. The certificate message is required for any agreed on key exchange method except anonymous defect element. Suppose if the fixed defect element is used this certificate message functions as the server's key exchange message because it contains the server's public DP element parameters. The server key exchange message key is sent if it is required and it is not required in two instances. The first instance is called as the server has sent a certificate with the fixed DP element parameters. Second one is called as RSA key exchange is to be used. The server key exchange message is needed of some of the following parameters. Anonymous Diffie Elman. This is the message content consists of the two global Diffie Elman values. Next one is called as mParamel Diffie Elman. The message content includes the three Diffie Elman parameters provided for anonymous DP element plus a signature of those parameters. Next parameter is called the RSA key exchange. The, cannot, the client cannot simply send a secret key encrypted with the server's public key. Instead, the server must create a temporary RSA that is provide a public key pay and use the server key exchange message to send the public key. The message content that will include the two parameters of the temporary RSA public key plus a signature of those parameters. Fortiso. 
this is the this contains the details about the signatures are warranted a signature is created by taking the hash of a message and encrypting it with the sender's private key in this case the hash is defined like this hash client allowed at random concatenated with the server allowed at random concatenated with the server parameters non anonymous server can request a certificate from the client the certificate request message includes two parameters one is called the certificate type and the other one is called the certificate authorities the certificate type indicates the public key algorithm and that can be used as a rsa signature tss signature rsa for fixed defilement and dss for fixed element rsa for empirical diff alman and dss for empirical diff alman and also fortija and the second parameter is a certificate request message is a list of the distinguished names of acceptable certificate authorities and the final phase it is called as a phase 3 that is client authentication and key exchange upon receipt of the server drone message the client will should verify that server provided a valid certificate and check that server allow parameters are acceptable if the server has requested a certificate the client will be begins this phase by sending a certificate message if no suitable certificate is available the client should say no certificate allowed next that client key exchange message which must be sent in this phase the and the content of the message depends upon the type of the following key exchanges first one is called as the rsa the client generates a 42 byte free master secret and encrypts with the public key from the server certificate or temporary rsa key from a server key exchange message mpml or anonymous dfelm this is a client public dfelm parameters are sent next one is fixed dfelm the client public dfelm parameter were sent in a certificate message so the content of this message will be null fortija this is the client fortija parameters that can be sent thank you